Since when am I Faust? Chapter 5, Part 2 As she opened the door to leave, the proto-queen gave a startled gasp at seeing the pink alicorn waiting on the other side. She was just about to knock on the door, and the pony looked at the maid with an irritated glare. It was the same glare her mother would give, and the maid unintentionally took a step back. Scared and her heart aflutter, the maid quickly bowed her head and muttered out a quiet, Sorry! And then she ran away. The imposter was left speechless as she sat there for a moment. Looking in the direction the maid went, her brow raised as she noticed something about the girl seemed familiar. She held that thought for a moment and then just shrugged it off and walked inside. Hello? Are you here? Out here, Cadence. I waved as I leaned in front of the window. Spotting me outside, the fake princess frowned and walked out to meet me. Her sour mood remained present until she walked through the front doors, and when she did, she paused, and her mouth hung open at the view. I chuckled at her surprise, and she blushed as she glanced in my direction. She had been caught gawking, and it somehow made her feel a bit embarrassed. Lifting my foreleg, I invited her to sit down, and the changeling hesitantly agreed. She sat in the seat across from me, still captivated by the view, and I lifted the teapot Lily had prepared. I poured her a cup and held it out in front of her. I watched in keen interest as the queen took the cup with her magic, and she pulled it close to take a sip, and her brow furrowed. Sniffing the drink, her ears twitched, and her head shot up with wide eyes. With a slight panicked voice, she asked, what type of tea is this? Um, I think it's called aqua... something, rather, I don't really know. I took a sip of coffee and leaned back in my seat as I watched her reaction. The cadence across the table from me became very serious, and she almost seemed angry. How did you get this? I shrugged and put my cup down. A friend of mine gave it to me, and I figured that you would like it. I wanted to make a good impression. Good impression? You said that we were friends! Gesturing with my hoof, I began tracing the rim of my cup with my hoof. Well, that's true. Cadence and I are friends. I breathed out as I looked her in the eyes. But you are not, Cadence. As if on cue, the pink alicorn suddenly came flying around the side of the castle. She circled down and landed on the balcony. She paused for a moment as she spotted herself across the table. She took a moment to get over her initial shock and she sat down beside me as she stared with wide eyes fixed on her double. Chrysalis's eyes twitched as she saw the pink pony and she huffed as she looked at the side. Trust the drone to do one job. She let out a growl as she gave us a cautionary stare, and then she leaned forward. So you know I'm not her, and judging by the tea, you know what I am. So why are you keeping me here? Why not turn me into your oh-so-precious princesses? Cadence raised an eyebrow as she raised her wings, and the changeling laughed in response. Uh, you know what I mean, Cadenza. Compared to them, you're no more of a threat than a unicorn. Cadence looked down, a little saddened by the truth of that statement, and Chrysalis looked over to me. And you. I've never even heard of you, but judging by your stature, you have even less magic than her. Is that correct? Do we have less magic? Yes, but I know how to use it. Glancing down, I felt myself become a bit unsure about this idea, but part of me was still confident that we could handle her if things turned for the worse. A bit hesitantly, I decided to continue with my proposal, and I leaned forward and said, The reason I invited you here is because I have a proposition for our two races. Oh, do you? Do you? Chrysalis leaned back and looked to the side, apparently already bored with the conversation. Yes, recently it's been brought to my attention that changelings have been struggling to acquire food. I would like to help you, but I need to ensure the safety of my citizens. I lit my horn, and the changeling flared hers in response. Holding my hoof up, I motioned for her to calm down and slowly pulled the treaty out of my book bag. The changeling relaxed slightly and opted to raise an eyebrow instead, as I slipped the paper over to her. She looked up at me and I explained. I've gone ahead and drafted out an agreement for our two races. The aim is to mutually benefit both sides. Please read it over and let me know if there's anything I left out." The queen snatched the paper and gave it a quick inspection. She frowned as she turned the page back and forth. Then after several seconds, she looked up at me with a blank stare and set it on fire. Standing up, I exclaimed, Dude, what the hell? I worked hard on that! You mean I did? Not now. Chrysalis's eyes narrowed and she sneered. Do you think I would stoop so low as to sign a contract with my food? Does a dragon have dealings with swine or a shark with a fish? Well, actually, pilotfish help sharks fight. Shut it! The changeling barked and I reared back. She stood up and began chuckling to herself as she shook her head. You think of us as equals, don't you? Oh, you ponies. Suddenly, she slammed her hooves on the table and yelled. Well, we are not! Cadence and I jumped back, a bit shooken by her sudden change in attitude. Chrysalis stepped back and began walking around the table towards Cadence and me. The two of us found ourselves walking in the opposite direction as she approached. We circled the table as we stared at each other, and the queen looked into my eyes. What she saw was youth, inexperience, and fear, and the same one for Cadence. Speaking up, I pleaded. 
Please, if we can't come to an agreement, then leave my kingdom alone. I'm trying to avoid a war. But war is what you get. I and my fellow changelings will devour all the love in this land until there's nothing left of it. Then you'll die stupid! The changeling grit her teeth and let her horn. Someone is definitely stupid, but I don't think it's me. Suddenly I heard a yelp behind me, and I saw Caden sinking into the ground. My eyes widened in horror as I reached out to grab her, but I wasn't able to bring her back up. She looked at me with tear-filled eyes, and I helplessly watched her disappear. A moment passed as I stared at the ground. My breathing began to quicken, and I felt a fire of anger ignite in my soul, and I lifted my head and asked aloud, What are you doing? Finishing what my drone couldn't. I heard a loud zap, and then my vision faded to black. The next thing I knew, I was gasping for air as I woke up on a stone floor. It was dark, damp, and smelled heavily of minerals. It took me a moment for my memory to return, and when it did, I slammed my hoof on the ground in frustration. Damn it, this is exactly what I was trying to avoid! Glowworms hung from the ceiling. The soft light they gave off bounced off the crystal walls, and I gradually was able to see the dimly lit cave. Standing up, I looked to the side and saw Cadence. She was lying on the floor, and she was unconscious. Worried about her safety, I walked over to check and make sure that she was alright. I looked over to her, and thankfully, she seemed to be alright, just a little drowsy. Straightening up, I looked at her surroundings, and a flash of green got my attention. I turned to see a massive wall of crystals light up with a green light, and I took my place in front of the unconscious alicorn. I watched as her double's face appeared on the crystals. Her image showed up all over the room, and it made Chrysalis's true location hard to pinpoint. The imposter took one look at me, and laughed. It's about time that you got up. I tilted my head to the side. Oh, really? <laughs> Has it been a while? I've had a bad habit of sleeping in lately. Sorry about that. So what'd you bring us down here for? She looked to the side and inspected her hoof. That's obvious, isn't it? I can't have two ponies running around interfering with my plans. Yeah, but I wouldn't have to interfere with your plans if they didn't suck. The changeling frowned at me as she sputtered. It's a good plan! No, it's not. Changelings feed on love. You'll rid yourself of a food source by becoming our enemy. Come on, it's not that difficult. If he'd just stop being such a bitch, you'd be set for life! Her ears lifted when I said that, and her sly smile turned into an angry scowl. You dare call me a- I'll kill you! She hissed, and she shot a beam of magic at a crystal hanging above me. I dodged the falling shard and frowned at her. Pointing my hoof, I exclaimed. See? This is exactly what I'm talking about! Shut up! The changeling fired another shot at the ceiling, and a small section of rock, dirt, and crystals fell where I had just been standing. Just stop already! Your plan won't work if you go through with this! You'll lose! We'll see about that! A falling stone cut the changeling off, and she looked up at the roof of the cave. I followed her gaze, and my eyes widened as I saw cracks spreading across the roof. The stones in the ceiling were beginning to come loose, and the two of us looked back at one another as we came to the same conclusion. Oh shit. Chrysalis quickly flared her horn, teleporting away, and I ran a cadence aside as the roof began to collapse. Throwing my body over the pink alicorn, I called out to my passenger for help. Lauren immediately took control and she let her horn to put up a shield. A moment later, there was a loud snapping sound, and hundreds if not thousands of pounds of rocks fell on top of us, burying us alive. The shield began to crack from the weight and I was scared, panicked even. I regretted thinking that I could handle this alone. Sure, I had Cadence by my side, but she was a peaceful pony, not a fighter. I just only hoped that Lauren could protect us long enough to get us out of this. She was using it to keep a large crystal from crushing us, and she desperately poured our magic into the shield as she tried to repair the damage. It kept on cracking though, and it was taking all we had to keep her from shattering. I could feel us burning through most of our mana, and the strain was causing us to get a splitting headache. As our magic began to run out, I could feel Lauren's control start to waver, and with a reluctant nod, the white alicorn shut her eyes as she extended her wings. She used them to cover over Cadence, and she clenched her teeth as she commanded me to... PROTECT HER! With the last bit of her magic, she flared her horn and shattered the crystal above us in a blinding flash of light. The majority of the boulder-sized crystal blew away. There was a moment of silence, but then a crystal shard hit the ground beside me. There was another, and another, and then all of a sudden, hundreds rained down on me. They went into my back and my wings, and one large crystal impaled my leg. Lauren and I screamed in pain, and blood began to strain our white coat. I winced as tears began to stream down my face, but I stood my ground. It was at this moment that Cadence woke up. She looked up in confusion, only to see my tearful eyes and my teeth clenched as I fought off the pain. She looked around at the cavern, and all the shards falling around us. Confusion covered her face and then her mind caught up. Remembering the events that happened just prior to her waking up, she looked at me with horror-stricken eyes. I strained to put on a smile, and I assured her. Don't worry. You're safe. A tear made its way down her cheek, and she stared up at me. After the debris stopped falling, I let out a pained whimper and fell onto my side. I was breathing heavily, and I smiled at the pink mare as I brushed her mane. I'm glad you're safe. I'm 
totally not inviting her again. I chuckled to myself, and then I passed out. Cadence leaned up and looked at the other pony. Lauren? Lauren! Lauren! Please wake up! Rolling the mare over, the pink alicorn gasped as she saw the damage. Shards covered her back, her wings, her legs, and she was bleeding badly. Cadence's heart sank as she looked at the damage, and she covered her mouth as she choked back her tears. A flash of light caught her attention, and the pink pony looked up to see her double. She was standing above the hole that the two alicorns now found themselves in, and the changing whistled as she looked down. <laughs> wow! You survived! Oh, that's impressive! Chrysalis glanced over at the unconscious mare and smirked. <laughs> Sacrificed yourself to protect the little Cadenza, did you? <laughs> How noble. But look at you now, on the ground, dying in a pool of your own blood. <laughs> How pathetic. Cadence clenched her teeth at the changeling's words, and for the first time in her life, the pink pony felt something. It was something unknown to her. It burned in her heart and boiled her blood. It was anger. Cadence looked up at her double with hatred, and she called out, saying, You just made a big mistake! Oh, really? And what are you gonna do? Wind me to death? The only mistake I've made is underestimating how strong dear Shiny's love has made me. Don't you dare touch him! The changeling simply smirked, and then disappeared in a flash of light. Cadence was left growling at the place where she had been, and she stomped her hooves as she screamed out. She wasn't sure how to react. So many emotions were flooding her senses, but the most prominent emotion was anger. That mare stole her fiancé, her identity, and she had hurt her friends. She would pay. Those thoughts raced through her mind over and over. But then, out of the corner of her eye, she spotted the other mare on the ground. The sight pulled her from her thoughts, and a light returned to Cadence's eyes as her anger began to subside. Turning to look at her friend, she held back her tears as her heart felt crushed. Holding her chest, she took a deep breath and used the trick that she taught Twilight to calm herself down. Collecting herself, she walked over and started tending to Lauren's injuries the best that she could. Just imagine how big those rocks are. They're like stalactites and stalagmites, you know, those big pointy things just spearing right into your body. That's a lot of internal damage that's either very hard to try and fix, or impossible. But hey, this is Equestria, so she'll probably live. Anyways, let's get on to our very lively donators. Top donators, SakoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Rootsythe 9852, Leslie Prickett, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sunfire, and many more spectacular people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.